Hello everyone and welcome to the first video from the Mastering Fusion 2.5 tutorial series. In this video we're going to be tackling on event and action execution order, frame rate, and multiple event execution intervals. Hello, this is editing me and I just wanted to say that this video was getting too long so I, I moved some, part of, some parts of it and we only have events left. So yeah, this video is going to be about events. Sorry for misleading you there. Okay, so I'm in the event list editor, and I made a bunch of started frame events uh, displaying, hello everyone, welcome to this awesome game, right? But you'll see that they are in a specific order. Now, if we run this, you will see in the debugger here that the events have printed in order because Obviously, they cannot run it at the same time. So, uh, but back when I, I was uh, a beginner into Click Team, I thought that a, b a bunch of shit runs at the same time, and you can't really trust having this. But order or, order counts. Okay, order order matters. Okay, but one other way you can do this is you can move everything to the main start of frame event. So just have one, right? like this we delete these all right and we have hello everyone welcome to this awesome game in one event and this will also print the same thing because uh, in an any given event these actions here they execute one after the next so that's really helpful to know and a bunch of other things uh, in or in order uh, matter so when you're doing object scoping uh you'll see wait let's let's create like an object here um i'll go over this in a in a future tutorial but so just to illustrate the point we're gonna have a uh a mouse event on this active here user clicks with left button on active now you'll see that this is a, with a different color than a few like other events. So, uh, alter values, alter value A is zero. You'll see that this, this is highlighted with a yellow color and this isn't highlighted. Now this means that the object currently clicked is being sculpted. And if you'll see now the or if I, if I switch the order of these two, um, you, you'll see that the object is no longer being targeted right because this has turned red so order on these things matters but i'll uh cover this in a future tutorial all right limiting conditions what are they they are ways to tell click team to not execute an event again depending on certain conditions so you have um let's see we, we click we click on active, we click on active and we print hello. Okay. And we, we when we run this, oh fuck, where, where is the active, fuck, okay, uh, yes. So when we run this, you'll see that it prints hello when we click on it. And no matter how many times I click it, it prints hello. Right now, click team gives us a bunch of these limiting conditions that we can use. So we have run this event once, which will limit this event to be executed one time. So once I click this active once, I cannot click it again until I come back to this frame. So say if I restart the frame, then it's going to bring me back. Right. Okay, so now you'll see that if I click on this, it'll print hello, but I can't click on it again. I'm clicking really fast right now, and it's not doing anything. So... Uh, and if I restart the frame, it will work because I restarted the frame, right? So, yeah. That's uh, run this event once. This can apply to any event, obviously. And, yeah. Next up, we have uh, only one action, one event loops. This, this is the most common one you will use in your game dev. Uh, you, you probably already know this because this this tutorial isn't really for beginners, but this is the one you use the most, and you probably understand what it does. 
So uh, let's say we have an, a hold event on this active. Um, so when we hover over the active and we keep the mouse down, uh, we will uh, we will print hello. And this is constantly going to print hello when I'm clicking and holding on this active here, right? But if I add the only one action when event loops limiting condition, it's only going to trigger once. Every single time uh, my mouse key registers as being pressed, right? It's essentially going to become like a, a click event that doesn't check for double clicks. So it's a faster click event. Okay, up next we have repeat actions or something like that. Let me finish this. Repeat, repeat, okay. Repeat. We repeat this, uh, let's say, 15 times. Okay, we repeat 15 times. What does this do? It will basically execute this event only 15 times. So whenever this uh, gets true, it's only going to execute until uh, the text hello has been printed 15 times. Yeah, if you're gonna count this, it's been printed 15 times. Because it lasted for 15 events, 15 frames, in which I had my mouse key pressed, and it doesn't have to be like, see? It's not gonna go uh, above 15, it's not gonna ha it's... It doesn't have to be uh, in the same, like, event trigger sequence it basically adds a counter to this event telling it to only go up to 15 times in execution a restrict actions so uh restrict uh, where is it limiting conditions restrict actions for one second so basically this is telling click team to restrict uh clicking the mouse on this active for one second so this event will not be able to trigger again for one second. Print hello. We can only print hello every second. I'm clicking as fast as I can right now, but it's only printing every second because it only allows it to execute every second. Loops. What are loops? Well, if you're familiar with programming, which I suggest you being familiar with because uh, after all, you're programming here. If, if you want to do anything advanced with click team, you have to think like a programmer, not like a dumbass. Okay. So, click team, click team, pretty much only has uh, four loops, or fast loops. So, let's add a start frame event to illustrate the point. Fast loops. Start loop. Uh, let's call it test loop, and let's call it fifteen times. Okay. And we're gonna tell it on loop test loop we're going to print hello okay and it has printed hello 15 times now how do fast loops work essentially the game will pause on this event well it's it's not going to pause it's essentially going to finish executing this event uh, which caused the loop Okay, so how, how does this work? It basically tells the event, okay, go execute test loop 15 times. And when you when you find an ev event uh, of type on loop, and it says test loop, basically you go and execute it. Okay, you do not do anything else before this finishes executing. So the game will not draw to the screen until it finishes executing. So, I mean, when I first heard that description, I thought, Okay, well, the game is going to like freeze temporarily, right? No, 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 because like, um, loops are really fast because they run on the, on the on the like processor clock, right? They don't wait for like frames to get drawn, so the game is going to be fine. It's going to run everything um, normally. And another thing you can do with loops is using their iteration index. So what this means is. Uh, think of every loop, it has a value for its current iteration. So, 
uh, on iteration. There's an iteration one. This is iteration zero, iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four, and so on, up to iteration fourteen. And we can print this iteration by uh, specifying the loop index. So we're going to print hello space plus string of loop index of test loop. And you'll see that it prints hello zero, hello one, hello two, hello three, hello four, hello five, and so on. Okay. So this, you can use this loop index for a bunch of stuff like, uh, let's say you want to you want to make a cube of actives. You want to spread a bunch of objects around a scene. You want to create a level. Well, you can create like a a grid with this, right? So you can multiply. Uh, you can multiply the loop index by some sort of offset so you can position the active the actives how you want uh, so I have I have an example of that here so we want to start a frame event we want to start a loop called let's say grid X and we want to call it let's say five times okay and on the loop on loop grid X you want to start another loop because you can do this grid y we will also call this five times now let's call it eight times why not and on loop fuck on loop grid y because we are because grid y is being started when grid x is running we can get the loop index of grid x and grid y so let's uh, create active well, i guess we're, we're gonna put it here i suppose it doesn't really matter and we're going to set the position of active to um no uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna set it to 100 plus um loop index grid x times a width of active okay and we're going to set the y position to 100 plus loop index grid y times o height active okay and what this is going to do is essentially going to create uh, a grid of actives 5 by 8 in size starting f having a top left corner at position 100 100 so uh, we're, we're going to uh, disable create and start for this and we're going to see what this creates and lo and behold it has made an active grid object loops I use these way more than the standard loops the fast loops that I just show you they are the best for scoping multiple objects uh, every frame and checking their properties so let's for example give this active every single time it spawns a few properties so alterable value is going to set alterable value a we're going to call this something else uh, to loop index of grid x and alterable value b loop index of grid y and we're going to call this uh, index x and index y for convenience. Okay. Uh, and we will, instead of setting it on here, we're going to make an event that checks after this runs. So another starter frame event, right? Uh, after every after this loop is finished we will check each and every single one of these actives to see what it's uh, to see which position it's at and we're gonna do something with it so uh, we're going to count for each object that's how you start a for each loop in click team we're gonna call this loop um, 
I don't check. Okay, and loops on each object. On each loop uh, check. On each one of active, on loop name check, we want to set the uh, alpha blending coefficient to index x plus index y of active. Uh, and we're going to multiply this by some other value. Let's say 100. Uh, yeah. Okay. And when this runs, we should see. Okay, well, uh, that's 100 is too much, but you'll see the effect that I'm going for. Okay, 10 is too subtle. <laughs> 30. 30 is a good spot. There we go. So you see. Now you see that these actives, because we are scoping each and every one of them, every single one of these has a different uh, alpha blending coefficient. This uh, check has allowed us to isolate every single one of these actives independently to be able to set a unique property to it. And, you know, you could, like, um, you could check a bunch of actives, you can see if like an idea of theirs is I don't know something and because of it's because it's something I don't know like if, if you hover your mouse over it for example you could display some text uh, depending on the object's ID so th that that's a great way to make use of this and I, I'm just showing you like a, a basic a basic stupid example for, for anyone to understand this is editing me once again, and I, f I forgot to record an intro for this video, so uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. It wasn't anything really great right now, but I hope to get better in the future, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.